Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we actually have an emergency L7C Wrestling Podcast. We're actually literally recording at 12.04 a.m. on September 6, 2021. AEW's All Out literally just concluded a couple of minutes ago, and it was a lot of things happened, and it was it was intense. It was so intense that our wrestling expert, our aficionado, Mr. Consistent Jacob Mason said, hey, we need an emergency podcast. I said, I'm awake. Let's do it right after the pay-per-view. So this is our first podcast literally right after a pay-per-view. Mr. Consistent Jacob Mason, how you doing today, sir? Dude, I'm I'm great. I'm great. It's it's late in or late or early. I'm not sure what, what is considered, but I'm freaking great, man. This is awesome. Jacob, man, let's let's just get right, right into it, bro. You AEW all out that just happened in Chicago, literally just concluded and Man, let's let's go right into it, man. Let's go into the matches. Lead the way, brother. This is an emergency pod. We have no. We're just flying right off the script. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. So we're just gonna talk about really like the main card stuff here. Um, for those, I'm sure for all the listeners, y'all probably know what happened at the end. We're gonna get to the end. That'll be the main meat and potatoes of this podcast, I imagine. But starting out, we had Miro. Versus Eddie Kingston for the TNT Championship. It's a great match to start off the pay-per-view. Super solid match. Miro got the win. I was good with it. It was, it was, a, it was a good match. I mean, Miro basically pulled a Roman Reigns-esque type move where he bounced off the ropes like a couple of times to get momentum to end up with a super kick to take out Eddie Kingston to get the win. He's still good. undefeated, too. I know yep. that much, yeah. Dude, and Redeemer Miro is awesome. Like, I love this whole, like, we're bringing God into the wrestling ring thing. Like, I love it. I'll, I'm here for it. It feels, like, very old school-ish. I, I like it. Um, very solid match. You know. Uh, but going forward, we had John Moxley versus Kojima from New Japan. This was the start of the... Forbidden door uh, entrance, you could say, from people from different companies or whatnot. But um, John Moxley versus Kojima, very, once again, very super solid match. These guys uh, just put on a really good match. I don't think there's too much really to say about it because the main excitement was at the end of the match, John Moxley beat Kojima. And then all of a sudden, someone else's music hit. I was taking a piss when this happened. <laughs> when I heard someone else's music hit, I basically ran from the bathroom so I could see the TV. And I'm looking, I'm like, who? Wait, wait, is that, is it, is it? It is. We get Minoru Suzuki, Suzuki. from New Japan Pro Wrestling, who might be the baddest motherfucker. From New Japan, Mm -hmm. to be completely honest, for those who do not know who Minoru Suzuki is, he's just a bad dude, just a very bad dude. Who he's in a way kind of like the uh, the the Japan John Moxley, like likes the pain, willing to take the pain, but gives it ten times harder than what he'll take it from. Um, And they're going to. I mean, they had a. They basically beat the shit out of each other. Slapped the hell out of each other through elbows. It was great. And then uh, Suzuki ended up standing tall at the end of it. Ended up putting a uh, sleeper on Moxley. Then hit him with his uh, plow driver. And uh, now they're going to have a match in Cincinnati this coming Wednesday, which is really cool because John Moxley's hometown. Mm-hmm. So, man, I cannot wait for Wednesday for this for just this match alone like i was pumped for this when they announced it because wednesday's a massive day for me with a bunch of personal stuff going on but to end it with stakes and aew and minoru suzuki sign me up this is going to be freaking awesome so very excited for that um the next match 
We had Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. EMD. Britt Baker. <laughs> EMD. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So I did not have much hope going into this match. Um, the buildup was eh to me. I know Chris Statlander was, uh, she's been kicking ass. She's been undefeated since uh, she came back or whatnot. But I just didn't have, I just didn't have a ton of hope for this match. I wasn't super excited for it, but I was surprised. It was a good match. I mean, Britt Baker went over as she should have, because even me being an AEW fan and being a massive mark for them, and disclaimer, I'm a massive mark, so I'm toting up AEW right now. <laughs> like, I'll just go ahead and say it. So, like, if anyone in the comments or you know anyone's talking at home, like, man, this guy just really shits on WWE, but he totes up AEW. You bet your ass I do. I am an <laughs> AEW mark. I don't care. Anyways, good match. Britt Baker goes over. That's that's that. It was solid, solid match. I was better than I expected it would, so I was happy with it. Now, you haven't seen this match yet. I have not. This match, I'm throwing it out there. Both me and my wife agreed on this. This is new, the new match of the year, in my opinion. I think this was better than the Walter Dragunov match, which is a very, very bold statement. But the Lucha Bros versus the Young Bucks in a steel cage match. Holy shit. Uh, the Lucha Bros had, poss- had one of the coolest entrances I've seen in a long time. They had, I don't know, AEW's version of Bad Bunny <laughs> come out and wrap them out to the ring. Which I had no idea who the hell it was. I'm not even going to pretend to know. I don't know. <laughs> but it was good. It was entertaining. Uh, they freaking uh, the Lucha Bros came out with these awesome headdresses. They remind me of, like uh, Rey Mysterio, like uh, WrestleMania mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, Young Bucks came up or come out. They ended up putting on an absolute clinic. The match started off a little slow, but got really fast really quick and then the pace never stopped uh at the one point you had oh it was uh matt jackson trying to take off penta l zero's uh mask trying to rip it off Mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure penta cut i think he uh gigged himself at one point um because the camera was like trying was showing him like this Mask getting ripped off, and they go back. They end up shooting, you know, another camera angle back on, and he is bleeding. I mean, bleeding profusely. Like, I'm like, I don't know what just happened. I might have missed something. I don't think I did. But like I said, I think he gigged himself. It is what it is. But the dude's mask was half ripped off, but it did not matter because his entire face was covered in blood, so it looked great. Uh, same with Ray Phoenix. His mask was like got half ripped off. He was not bleeding though, like Penta was. Um, this match uh, at the one point, uh, the Young Bucks get out a thumbtack shoe, which goes back to uh, their days on the indie circuits when they faced Candice, Candice LeRae and Joey Ryan, uh, the world's cutest tag team, and they hit Candice with a shoe that was filled with thumbtacks all on mm-hmm. the bottom well they busted that out and they hit penta they hit ray phoenix at one point uh they end up getting the shoe off and uh the lucha bros hit uh the young bucks with the the shoe and everyone's ended up you know busted open it was just such a god damn it was such a good match it was it was amazing the Lucha Bros end up going over. I mean, but going into this match, like one of the things I always complain about with pay-per-views and WWE is I always know who's, you can always know who's going to win. Yeah. Going into the matches and there's, you know, this was, I had no idea who was going to win, but I knew the Lucha Bros were the faces. I mm-hmm. knew the Young Bucks were the heels and they just, burnt this entire pay-per-view to the ground. It was so freaking 
good. Yeah. So as soon as you can watch that, Martin, Ooh. highly recommend it because I want to hear your opinions on it the next time we do a podcast. Who who followed them then? If this was your match of the year, who had the task of following them up? Well, it was the uh the women's battle or casino battle royal. Okay. 21 women. Uh which okay. Let's talk about a match I had zero hope for. It was this match. <laughs> because <laughs> we here on the L7C podcast, uh we are pretty honest now about our things now me saying earlier i'm a mark for aew i make no qualms about how shitty the women's division is yeah if the women's division in aew puts on matches like they put on tonight they will go to the moon and beyond this battle royal or uh royal rumble whatever the hell you're calling it um this Royal Rumble was the best women's Royal Rumble I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. They absolutely beat the shit out of everybody. Everybody got, everybody looked good. Everybody looked good. Um, I mean, some of the cool things uh, before we get to the final entrant uh, that happened. Um, Red Velvet st- Threw a spear on, I think it might have been Big Swole. She hit her with a spear, and I shit you not, it was one of the most violent spears I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, it reminded me of Rhino-esque gore days. Oh, Lord. Dude, it was violent. It was awesome. And especially seeing Red Velvet, who's got away a whopping, like, 100 pounds soaking wet. Like, it looked like she was... 500 pounds going 500 miles an hour. Absolutely turned this girl inside out. It was so good. Um, I mean, everybody everybody looked good in this. They, I, I've never seen the women's division be this good. Just, I don't know how else to describe it. They just, everybody put everyone over. Everyone won. And then we get to the very end. We get to the Joker. And out comes Ruby Riot from WWE, now known as Ruby Soho, who's been putting up vignettes for weeks about uh, Lost Girl or whatnot she's been posting up and trying to find her way home, essentially, or wherever her new home. She ends up finding it. It's AEW. Holy shit. She looked fucking awesome. It ends up coming down to Ruby Riot, uh, Nyla Rose, and uh, Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. The final three they eliminate Nia Rose, and then it's her and Thunder Rosa. Ruby Soho goes over. She wins. And you know what? I'm like, she looks so happy. Like her just debuting, like her and AEW just feels right. Okay. okay. Uh, I just feel like they're just going to let her be her. They're not going to force her to try and be something she's not. I'm so happy for her. It was kind of weird, though, seeing her come in. You know, being a brand new person Mm -hmm. and getting that push to number one contendership now. And she's going to face Britt Baker. Yeah, I do think we'll we'll talk about, obviously, we're getting to the other people who shut up tonight. But getting a woman signing like Ruby and instantly making her the number one contender against uh, Baker, I feel like that does create some create some buzz. I mean, because they really I mean. As again, we'll talk about some other people. They really don't sign the women all like that. And getting a woman who's known in the community and already making her number one contender, someone fresh for uh, Dr. Britt Baker, because we were talking about that women's division. Like, man, it was just getting lit. But now Ruby, you throw Ruby in there, add some more spice. And I think there'll be some more women down the line as um, people's 90-day things with WWE is expiring. So I was happy to actually see Ruby in. See her as a number one contender because now is she going Omega to the moon? Is she going to be the one who finally beats Baker? Like, maybe we don't know. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how you book this because I get if you want to keep Britt Baker your champion, but I also understand if you want a more common name in Ruby Riot and or now Ruby Soho. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand wanting to get her push because you're going to get more name recognition 
But Britt Baker is your most popular women's wrestler you have. Yeah. At the one point, I about freaked out, though. You will laugh at this. Um, at the one point, they're having these people come down, and uh, I went, holy shit. I was like, no way. It's Tessa. It was Rebel. It was Rebel uh, Hardy or whatever the hell her name is. The person who's with uh, Britt Baker. Mm-hmm. The, the outfit she was wearing, the way she had her hair, everything looked like. I was like, is that? Is that Tessa? <laughs> I'm like, no way, that's Tessa. And I'm like, oh wait, no. It literally is not Tessa. <laughs> uh, that would have been that would have been too freaking wild. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, it, it was humorous. I, I wish it was. I wish it was recorded. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see. I'm I'm getting updates right now. Of course, per wrestling tees. Check it tomorrow. There's all going to be on a whole bunch of t-shirts. They're all going to be sold out. Yeah. All right. Uh, so after the uh, Ruby Soho uh, victory, we got Chris Jericho versus MJF. Now, the whole thing behind this match was if Jericho loses, he will no longer wrestle in AEW. Mm-hmm. So Chris, uh, MJF actually does one of the best troll jobs I've seen in a long, long time. I'm not sure if you've caught this yet or not. Um, it, um, the countdown thing to pretend the count, the the countdown I saw from, that. from Chris Jericho when he debuted in WWE years and years and years ago they had the countdown and i was like oh man like like watch like jericho's gonna get through like his entire like career like that was my first thought when i seen the countdown Mm -hmm. and then like no here comes mjf which was what a wonderful wonderful troll job by mjf i i can't (laughs) i can't be mad at it um but then uh a guitar starts playing and it's uh the guitarist from fozzy is just playing uh, Judas. He ends up playing Chris Jericho down to the ring. Mm-hmm. Now, me and my wife were watching this and we're going, oh, shit. Like, Jericho looks emotional. So you, you thought it was going to be it? D- yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, I looked at my wife. I was like, I don't think Jericho's going over. It's like, why not? I was like, look at him. Like, he looks emotional. Like, he was out at the ring. Like, it looked like he was going to cry at the one point. Like it just looked like I'm um, like you know like old yellers you know about to go out behind a woodshed type deal. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, and like the entire match, like especially the beginning, there were so many moments where it's like, oh my god, Chris, like like he just looks emotional. Mm-hmm. Like he, this is it. Like this is the last ride of Chris Jericho because coming up, he has a Fozzie tour coming. He also has the, um. Uh, Jericho cruise coming up, mm-hmm. allegedly, if they're still somehow able to pull a cruise during this pandemic. But uh, I was like, oh, like I, me and my wife were talking in the middle of this match. I'm like, oh man, you watch, like, like Chris Jericho, he's not going to wrestle again, you know, on AEW or not. But, but what Chris Jericho would do is smart business. He'd be like, if you want to watch me wrestle, you got to come on the Jericho cruise and I'll wrestle on there. That's the only time you'll ever be able to watch me wrestle. <laughs> That was my thoughts. I was like, oh, yeah, he's not going to win. So they, once again, this match, absolute fucking banger uh, through and through. And it gets to the end where MJF is pinning Chris Jericho. And right at the two count, Chris Jericho throws his leg over onto the rope. And the ref doesn't see it. And she counts three ring the bell matches over i'm like oh shit no way this is how it's going to end like this fucking sucks like <laughs> i have watched the the emotional roller coaster that has been this match of these two wrestlers absolutely telling a fucking story and it's going to end like this it's like god damn it i hate mjf so much which is perfect you want to hate mjf that's exactly what they want and then another ref comes out and i'm like oh no way and then Southern Ref's talking to uh, Aubrey, Ref Aubrey. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, no, he got his leg up on the two count. His, and it showed, like, Chris Jericho's leg is still on the, the rope. And she's like, it's been on there the whole time? It's like, yeah, it's been on there the whole time. Blah, 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 blah. 
He's like, oh, I need to restart the match. Like, yes, you need to restart the match. <laughs> they go over, tell uh, Justin Roberts. And Justin Roberts goes, oh, the uh, match, uh, Chris Jericho had his leg on the rope. Therefore, this match will be restarted. You know, MJF is, you know, kicking shit. You know, like, no, this is bullshit, blah, 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 whatever. And it ends up Chris Jericho goes over at the end. You know, when it all gets said and done, Chris Jericho ends up fucking winning. And goddamn, way to take me on an emotional fucking roller coaster and tell this awesome fucking story. And I, I Chris Jericho is the fucking man. This guy coming down and looking like he's about to start crying. Old Yeller is like, this is the last one. And he ends up fucking winning. Like, what a god damn, like, take notes into your wrestlers. This is how, this is wrestling. This is how you do it. That's how you make it believable. I mean, like you said, he came down crying, like all that. Like he could have, like, if you're a smart wrestling fan, you could be like, man, he couldn't hold it in in the back. Like he's crying because he already knows this is it for all the reasons you said. But then you keep on going on. So go on him, man. That's that's what it's about. Not making it predictable. Oh, it was wild. It was it was absolutely wild. And like throughout all this, I mean. There matches where I'm like, oh yeah, this person's going to play a match where I went like this. Britt Baker's definitely going over, and she definitely went over. I never had a question that once. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else, I mean, there were mo- there's slight moments where I'm like, oh, oh, I'm in partial disbelief here. Oh man. Uh, so let's talk about our next match. Now, this match, me and you talked about before on our group chat was CM Punk versus Darby Allen. Mm-hmm. Now, me and you talked. Um, I thought this match was going to end up being the main event. Yes, you did. Which I understand why you would want this match as your main event. Because CM Punk, he's coming back. He's wrestling. That's that's a main event. That's something that's bigger than the championship this one time. Mm -hmm. But you can never, ever put anything after your main event your main champion you cannot do that and god bless aew for sticking to old school fucking wrestling Mm -hmm. and making sure nothing went on after the fucking main event your main champion that was awesome so i was happy i was so happy so we get punk versus darby allen how did he look how did you feel punk looked in his first like match in seven years well, the one thing that really kind of went, I went, oh shit. He wasn't wearing trunks. He was wearing pants. I saw that. Yeah. Which was, you know, we're so used to seeing him in trunks that, hey, he was in pants. It worked for him. Uh, all in all, like the match, it was, it was slow. Like it, it was slow. You could tell, like, Darby Allen carried, you know, the majority of this match. Punk was telling him what to do, though. He's like, hey, do okay. this. Hey, do that type deal. I thought he looked fine. Did I think he looked 100%? Absolutely not. But I didn't expect him to look 100%. I didn't expect him to look like the punk of old when you haven't wrestled for seven years. Seven years, yeah. In front of a sold-out crowd. In just Chicago. doing nothing but chanting your name, you know? Cool. You, you can't... I don't, I don't care how... No one can be that good. Right. So... All in all, I thought it was good. I thought it was just a good match. Punk went over, but more importantly, Punk might have won the match, but both people went over. Everyone looked strong. Everybody looked good. Punk said, I'm here to help you, and you're the first person on my list. And damn it, he helped him. Mm -hmm. He looked good doing it. I mean, there was... There's a couple coffin drops in there that Darby threw in. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, like Darby, like Darby might pull this out because the moments where like Darby was just being Darby just fast as fuck, just throwing his body to the wind, like is, you know, it's nothing what Darby does. I mean, yeah, there's moments I'm like, shit, is could Darby go over? Like, it's possible. I don't know. But no, punk goes over. Everyone wins. Everybody looks good. Can't complain there. Gotcha. So then our following match, 
I forgot this was even going to be a match, to be completely honest. Big shows? Yeah, we have Paul White versus Q- Paul White versus QT Marshall. And when they put this match in there, I was like, this is actually kind of a smart move by AEW. Because you cannot have three absolute bangers, one right after the other, because the crowd will be dead. Yep. They'll be dead by the time the the main events music hits. So you put in Paul White and QT Marshall. Everybody go take a piss. Go refill your beer. Go do what you got to do. Because um, no one really, I don't think anyone cares about watching Paul White. I like the big show. Always been a fan of the big show. I don't care to watch him wrestle anymore. This was kind of perfect for him. This was a nice four-minute match, four or five-minute match. Mm-hmm. Where basically Paul White did Paul White things. Yep. It was a bang bang. I only had it down for three minutes and ten seconds. All right. Three minutes and ten seconds. Perfect. Great. He got in all his he got in all his shit. <laughs> That's it. He 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 did the thing in the corner where you know he pulled his shirt down and went shh and slapped him <laughs> yeah. right in the chest. You know, he does like and I'll say this much. Big Show can still do the world's safest choke slam that's ever been done. I mean, my God, if I'm going to take a choke slam for a professional wrestler, I want it to be from Big Show mm-hmm. because he choke slammed QT Marshall, but he just so gingerly like picked him up and it, like had his hand like below his ass, so he's just like cradling him and then like just so put him down where it looked good, but he did it so safe. I was like, God, that's perfect. That's <laughs> absolutely perfect. Like. Look at this gentle giant over here. Paul White goes over. Everyone's happy. Whatever. No one, no one cares. But, you know, feel good moment. Main event. Uh-huh. Main event. Yeah, main event. So we got Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Your Mr. guy. Yeah, the charisma black hole. I mean, yeah. I thought the build up to this sucked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get what they were trying to do. And maybe it's just because I just don't like Christian. <laughs> There's a good chance that's that's a possibility. Because they had Christian go over on Kenny to win the Impact Championship, which I think was just to kind of help push this match more. Like, mm-hmm. oh, he's beat Kenny before. He can do it again. Like, yeah, but it's Christian. I don't give a shit about Christian. <laughs> Christian. That's it. So I, I had no real hopes going into this match. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of worked out in my favor because my hopes were so low that I was actually, I, I enjoyed the match. <laughs> Kenny Omega did work. Even Christian did work. They had a really sweet table spot. It was a solid match. It wasn't their best match I've ever seen. Just a nice, solid match. It wasn't bad. None of these matches were bad. That's the one great thing about this pay-per-view. There was not one match I could look back and be like, eh, I don't know. It was all good. Nothing was bad. It felt like an old school, like NXT pay per view. And mm-hmm. like, they were just great quality matches. So Kenny Omega goes over on Christian Cage with a um, super one winged angel. It's cool. Great. Whatever. Um, let's, let's talk about after the match, though. Let's talk let's about do it. Holy fuck. Let's do right. it. So Kenny Omega or the the entire elite comes down. You have you know the good brothers, you have young bucks, you have Don Callis in the ring, and they start to beat down Christian Cage, and then out comes Jurassic Express, and then they get their ass beat by the elite. And uh, which by the way, meantime. You saw the Young Bucks selling their their injuries from their epic match from earlier. So, like, shout out to the Young Bucks for, you know, good wrestling and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, But we get Kenny Omega hops on the mic and he goes, no one can beat me. The people that are that can beat me aren't here or they're dead or they're retired. No one can beat me. And the lights go black. Now, everyone's thinking like, oh, shit, Daniel, the, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, it's Daniel Bryan. Oh, my God. The lights went out. What's about to happen? 
And then this music hits and you're like, what the hell music is this? This isn't something I, I know. Mm -hmm. Boom. Lights come on. Adam fucking Cole. Baby. Adam Cole shows up. Adam Cole is all elite. I lose my shit. I absolutely lose my shit. Adam Cole, who we thought would not show up anywhere until the run. No, we did it. The dude just finished his WWE thing just this past week. He had a he had a damn signing with Johnny Gargano on Thursday, and his contract expired on that Friday. And then everyone's like, hey, where is he going? Where is he going? And yeah, we didn't expect him to show up to the Rumble, but let alone this Sunday. Well, this Sunday, they just had freaking all out. That was super unexpected. And for him to just be done with WWE, then right to AEW within a week's time, that is wild, bro. That is wild timing. It makes you kind of think if there was talks like already ahead of time, you would have to think there were talks ahead of time. And I do want to shout out to... Adam Cole, then, if the talks were ahead of time, because he was a pro's pro, like he finished his WWE stuff, didn't half ass anything, and then shook their head. Thanks for everything you did for me, and was on AEW just like that. Yep. And, and if the rumors are true, fuck you, AEW. I'm not losing my Twitch stream. You mean fuck you, WWE? I'm not losing. You said AEW. Yeah. 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 yeah that's why I meant WWE. Fuck you, Vince. If I don't get my Twitch, you don't get me. That's the thing I was going to... Well, we can talk about it now before we bring about the other people. Who came, but I was going to say at the end, too, like, this is something that they're going to have to look at. Because is it really worth losing one of the best wrestlers on the planet over the goddamn third-party ban? And I already know, guys, I know the L7C, we've covered that thing probably more and extensively probably than maybe anyone out there. So definitely look at our past episodes about that because we can't go into full context of it now because it's too much. But they got to relook at that thing, bro, just for just to make it short. They got to relook at it because you lost. I, if it's true, you lost Adam Cole because of a Twitch stream. Yep. That, that's unheard. He was not supposed to be here. You were supposed to re-sign him for that a million dollars. And he was supposed to debut on SmackDown like the other rumors. And it was because you didn't want him to do his Twitch stream that because of the third party ban that you lost him. That's that's bad. That's not even bad. That's not even bad from a wrestling thing. That is bad from a business sense. You're losing one of your best workers in a company because of one measly thing that the people who messed it up for everybody aren't even with the company anymore. Or don't even do anything. So. That's just bad business, not even wrestling business. That's just bad business. But keep going, man. I got more yeah. to talk about with them later, but keep going. <laughs> so uh, Adam Cole comes out and, you know, I had that split second thought. And it, re- it hit me more later, I think, after. Um, although all this has happened pretty damn quickly <laughs> between <laughs> pay-per-view and podcast. But, you know... Between we've had so many WWE releases, I almost forgot that Adam Cole naturally just finished out his contract. Therefore, he doesn't have a no compete clause. Yep. Like, I don't know why that didn't hit me before when we talked about Adam Cole's contract uh, negotiations and stuff. Like, fuck waiting to the rumble. Let's do it now. Like, I, yeah, like, you always forget about it because there's so much other shit happening. But uh, Adam Cole comes down and uh, he ends up hugging Kenny Omega and ends up getting kissed on the cheek by the Young Bucks, which is absolutely fucking great. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is one of the best things I've seen because the Young Bucks killed Adam Cole in Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Because Adam Cole tried killing the young bucks. It was great. But anyway, so they end up doing the kiss, which is great because that's how that friendship ended in wrestling. And now that's how that friendship rebegins in, in wrestling. wrestling. God bless it. I fucking love it. Like there were so many throwbacks this night. Okay, great. Adam Cole, or not Adam Cole, Kenny Om- or 
side note, Adam Cole throwing up his hands and doing the Adam Cole Bay Bay in front of the uh, sold out crowd and the crowd, you know, absolutely just screamed it at the top of their lungs. Fucking mint. <laughs> it was fucking mint. So, okay. Uh, Kenny gets on the mic. He goes, Oh, we've been best friends all along. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're great. You know, we're best buddies, whatever. Um, Adam Cole gets on the mic, says, you know, like, who's ready for story time with Adam Cole, which was a whole thing he used to do on the indies. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Can't wait. Um, and, uh, well, oh, Adam Cole, a super kicks, uh, jungle boy that happened before all that. Then, you know, Kenny Omega, we're best friends, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And then, lo and behold, new music hits. Mm -hmm. And it's the ride of the Valkyries. And for those who do not know what that song is, you do know it by another song. Daniel Bryan's theme song hits. Yep. And that goes like, you know, some uh, remix version of it. But it starts out Daniel Bryan's theme song. Mm -hmm. And holy shit, insert Daniel Bryan. Into the into the talks, out comes Daniel Bryan. All your friends says Bryan Danielson is now all elite. Let's fucking go. They come out, uh, them Jurassic Express, uh, clear the fucking ring, take everyone out. Uh, Daniel Bryan hits a running knee on uh, one of the young bucks, is fucking awesome. I'm super hype on this still. Like, this was freaking awesome. Um, yeah, so quick recap. We've had Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, CM Punk, all in the same, all in the same wrestling company, all on the same card. And that's not including John Moxley, the Young Bucks, the Lucha Bros, the Good Brothers. You literally have an absolute fucking all-star team that is now all elite. Holy fuck. This company can do anything they want at this point. So my biggest thing, what I always say about the signings, especially with these, because yeah, I was not expecting Adam Cole this soon, but I was expecting Daniel this one. I, I really was not expecting Adam. But with these signings, too, I mean, these are big freaking names. And obviously, it's just, you know, the simple wrestling thing like, hey, someone's someone's back to catering now because ain't no way everyone's going to be all because you got to make time for Adam and Daniel on the two hour slot of of Wednesday nights. But no, this is this is huge, man. When I saw I did see the returns on Twitter. I actually watched those videos before we did this emergency pod. And I was like, shit, this is real. and. AEW, because I guess I'm thinking of it for a bit. They're they're smart. They're so smart with the Adam and Daniel thing, because obviously, just if you're doing it against your competitors, WWE just lost all their buzz because their biggest star is gone again. Like he's back to doing his movies and all of that stuff. So like. If you look at that, because I mean, all of WWE's summer stuff was all based on John Cena, right? Like, summer of Cena, like he's gone now. So then he's just like, oh well, Cena's gone, and now he's doing his movie stuff and his other movie, whatever, is doing really well. But it's like he's gone. WWE's going back to this little, eh. We're just gonna now we're gonna take over. They might have had Summer of Cena, we threw Punk in there, but now we're gonna have Fall and Winter. So we're we're gonna we're just gonna, is coming. We're just gonna take September to January because we just no one expected Adam, no one expected Daniel. And I mean with I think right now I, I mean as long as he keeps I think CM Punk right now is the biggest star in professional wrestling. Who's in the wrestling ring now that John is gone? I think he's the biggest star in wrestling. So if you have the biggest star, you have Daniel Bryan, who uh, we all know he's a great wrestler. Plus, he's a household name due to his championships and all the places and who he's married to. You have Adam Cole, who you know who his girlfriend, because they're not engaged, right? 
No, but I have a feeling I'll probably be coming soon. You watch it on the happening on AEW. So you just name like if you just name the people, the chant Kenny Omega, CM Punk, Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan. You give me those four, you put them against whoever the hell you think WWE's four best males are, and AEW's four best males smoke them. All day. And like you just said, we're not even na- we're not even naming Jericho, Moxley, Black, Young Bucks. Cody. Co- Shit, I forget Cody wrestles, bro. Cody. Like, this men's roster is freaking stacked. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. And I don't want to, I don't want to, this is probably one of the best men's rosters. I know as wrestling fans, we get tired of making the comparison to this time period, but it's probably one of the best male rosters since the Attitude Era. From Hands top down. To, from top to bottom. From singles, tag teams. Shit, we just we didn't name Mirio. <laughs> like this roster, this well, like here's something else. Like me and my wife we were kind of like chit-chatting about this when I was writing some shit down for the emergency podcast here. Like AEW, like they're even building stars. Yeah. What yeah. they have done with Jungle Boy and Darby Allen. Darby Allen. Yeah. Two absolute fucking no-name guys, essentially. I look at those guys and they have been built so freaking well. You know, even like being from the indies, like I really didn't even know who they were. Mm-hmm. Now, now they're for their household, they're, at least in this house, you know, their they're, they're names here, you know, they're building stars. And then you look at WWE, who's taking someone like Karrion Cross and making them look like the generic version of Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know. You're not building stars. Mm-hmm. People, you know, you're relying essentially at this point on part timers and Roman Reigns. That's what you're doing. You're not even building stars. And you're Charlotte. not getting new stuff. Oh yeah, Charlotte. And Fuck Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I no man. I just it's wild because I'm really starting to think like if I put four four of the top peak i mean roman's obviously there but then like you gotta have roman and seth that's two and i mean bobby randy it's like that men's roster is it's not the same compared to aws and aws and it's the fact that aws is getting some of them are getting built off the people wwe released and it's crazy too that daniel and adam and punk will get all the Headlines and rightfully so, but for me personally, I think Ruby showing up was one of my biggest things, just because it's another top woman. Like I, I love that. Which they need. They need more than they need. They need more women wrestlers than they need, you know, men's wrestlers. But fuck it, keep building that. Keep building the roster. Fuck it, keep, I'm here keep, for it. Yeah, keep doing it. And like, I, I don't know, man. This is just wild. Like, I'm just looking at a whole bunch of people who are former world champs and Adam Cole. I mean, think about Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly's the only one left, I think. Uh, no, uh, you saw Roderick Strong there. Roderick Strong's there. The Bobby Fish is, yeah, Bobby Fish and Adam are gone. Yeah. yeah. So that's but, two I mean, out of the four. Roderick Strong is, I don't know, this fucking generic ass. Undisputed Era is stupid that he's doing, so whatever. Yeah, and you're gonna, I mean, and Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan are big enough that other news outlets besides like our wrestling ones are talking about them. Like ESPN, yeah. uh, the news will talk about it in the morning, like Sports Illustrated, like they'll get good. I mean, CM Punk was on Sports Center just this week talking about how there was never really a chance for WWE. And he talked about some talks, it just wasn't gonna work, or like how he was, if he felt like he went there, he was gonna die. And like, even if I know Punk from you know, a punk is punk but if someone's saying that about your company man you got to look yourselves in the mirror like what the hell are you doing how do you let cm how do you let cm punk daniel bryan and adam cole go to AEW? ow now yeah because punk said earlier or in a interview pre post all this stuff mm-hmm. that wwe is playing games yeah that's the thing because they offered him a contract, or they, they wanted to talk to him. Apparently, this was years ago. And I believe Punk in this, 100%. Um, 
I based that on absolutely nothing, by the way. Do you remember the year he said? Because I, I could probably, if it's if I knew the year, I could probably figure out what the he hell is, was going. I, on. From what I read, he just said a few years ago. So, um, but that being said, uh, he told him like, just don't play games. He goes and right after rip. They started playing games with me. So fuck them. I ain't doing it. He stays home, keep his ball. And yeah, I mean. I don't know how you I don't know how you screw the pooch this bad. Especially Daniel Daniel Bryan, you you made his fucking wife famous. Yeah. Like what the f- they were talking about they were gonna come back and try and win the women's tag team titles. Now your husband's over there at A freaking W, even though they might not be the greatest wrestlers. God forbid the Bellas are like, you know what? We want to go help our husband and brother in law and show up on AEW. Imagine the fuck. <laughs> Now you want to talk about the national news talking? God, <laughs> they would be oh, yeah. yapping it up if the Bellas showed up. Yeah, absolutely. Which, fuck, I mean, I don't, as much as I don't want to see them there, fuck it, bring it on. Fuck it, who cares? They're going to bring such a name, I'm in for it. I just want everybody to watch AEW right now because this is honestly the best wrestling right now in the fucking world. Nothing is better than AEW right now. I want everybody to watch this. I want everyone to enjoy this. God bless AEW right now. Because NXT has been we don't know what the hell is about to happen with NXT. We don't. I already don't like the That new logo sucks. Oh, shit. This, I mean, everyone's saying like, oh, Vince McMahon's taking over this. Him and Bruce Pritchard. And holy shit. They are certainly taking over that already just by the logo, you can tell. I mean, I don't know. And then that WWE's fucking up catering. Yeah, those were, were. And from a business side, I'm I'm reading the stuff from like USA and Fox. They're getting they're getting pissed that WWE's letting these people go, and like they're getting signed. They're like, "What do you mean, so and so's gone?" And like, that's affecting our ratings too, dude. Like, what are y'all doing? Dude, right now, I mean, I was a little hype in the moment. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little excited. When Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole and uh, everything, and then you know, AEW went off air. Oh, they have Sting uh, and Big Show too. Forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're at the and bottom, then, but I for, I forgot. Yeah, and then you have you know, fuck another person they've built like nobody else. MJF. MJF. What a oh, that fucking was. stud. But uh, anyways, I I literally like looked at my wife like, I literally think. AEW right now could go to Mondays, be on a three-hour time slot with WWE Raw, and absolutely smoke them in the ratings. They would. They even without everyone else, they have CM Punk. Yeah, Punk. You got Punk. You got Brian. You got you got everybody. You can absolutely smoke show the competition right now. Jericho said, "Just give it time that their Wednesday night ratings will start beating Monday night Raw's ones." I one hundred percent. I I I I believe it. But at the rate they're going, they're not they're literally quote unquote they're going all out on all elite wrestling. And I am but I am here for this fucking journey and I love it. Yeah, man. This this is just the names recently. Like you were able to pull off the impossible. You got CM Punk back first time in seven years. You were able to get Daniel Bryan back, which I guess when his contract expired, they didn't renew it or whatever. You were able to get Adam Cole when his contract expired. I mean, Shizuki, can't forget him. They got him today. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll only have him, you know, for a match or two. Yeah, but, but still but showed up still today. Got a forbidden door open. Mm-hmm. Ruby, which is my favorite one. And it's like, this is just today. I'm thinking about full gear in November or not even before that, Halloween. Where we're expecting, that's where we think uh, Bray's going to show up. Yeah. You have non-compete clauses with the, uh, the Icon- I was going to say another, the yeah, Bellas, but the Iconics one just ended. They already announced a tour. They said coming soon. They might be coming on here. You got, well, gosh, <laughs> which would, be, uh, we got CJ Perry, whose one just ended, a.k.a. Lana. She could be showing up here. You got Braun Strowman. We still, what do we think? We haven't seen where he's officially. I did see he has a wrestling match coming up, though. 
Braun does, if I do remember. But hell, he could show up. Like, there's been so many people that have been released by WWE that's so top talent that they could show up on AEW. Like, this roster is ridiculous. And at the same time, they don't even have to show up at AEW. Let's be, let's be, let's be fucking real. They could gladly show up on Impact Wrestling. And because the forbidden door is open, you will still see them wrestle on AEW. It's true. I, I this is wild. And again, they're I mean the cons are all rich. They got football season coming too, so they're gonna get their money from Jaguar games. And they're able now they answered what I was asking six months ago about could they afford all these people if this shit happened? And they've proven me wrong. They can't afford all these people if this shit happens. And I do want to say with like Punk and Cole and Daniel, Kenny, Chris, I don't see them doing this for like another 10 years. Like I think in 10 years time, MJF is going to be the face of AEW. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. Between him, Darby and Jungle Boy, they're going to be the faces of that company. But in the meantime, you're not going to see Daniel Bryan wrestling full time. No, I'll see Daniel Bryan do. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a build up here. I'm gonna do a build up here. I'm gonna do a build up here. But here is going to be AEW. Here's gonna be New Japan. Here's gonna be Impact. Here's gonna be whatever the fuck I want to do. Is Adam Cole gonna wrestle full time though? Because he was wrestling full time just last week. Uh, Adam Cole wrestle full time. I have no doubt about that. Um, the one thing I I mean I would love to see, and this is just. Me going like, hey, Forbidden Door, where is this at right now? Um, somehow, if we can get Adam Cole involved in some Ring of Honor stuff or bring some Ring of Honor guys into AEW uh, with the whole Adam Cole thing, because Adam Cole and Ring of Honor is just goes together like peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. It's just perfect, um, especially with Matt Taven and all those guys. I'm definitely here for it. But uh, yeah, Dude, they're so possibilities are endless right now and then on top of all that we're dealing with possible like in my opinion the pay-per-view of the year hands down i don't, I don't see any any disagree with, even if you didn't even watch it just the people who showed up is already like <laughs> it already beats what even the summer slam wasn't even good at all it beats brock and becky coming back by tenfold so, and even the matches were good too. And I was just thinking from a match perspective about the NXT one, but you had good matches, potential match of the year candidate, which I'm going to try and watch definitely this week. And a match of the year candidate, good matches all around and surprise appearances. Now nah, this, I, I agree with you that this currently on November, I, don't, I mean, November, September 6th is the match pay-per-view of the year. Yeah, but then on top of all this craziness that happened, fucking New Japan's coming out of nowhere and announcing the A and B blocks of the G1 uh, Climax. G1. Fuck, I like shit. I, I see, I'm like, oh yeah, we talked about that. It was probably about a year ago. We got to start firing up talk about New Japan again. That's true. Fuck, let's go. Dude, the wrestling world is a buzz right now. It is so good. God bless it. It is. It is really good. It's actually a really good spot to be a wrestling fan because you have all the different options. And I mean, hopefully, I know all the old heads like Stone Cold. I'm like, hopefully this should light a fire in WWE's ass because I know there are people who they're watching, obviously, fellow wrestlers, all that's like, man, I got to get better than this person because, you know, competition. Hopefully they're like, man, how could we compete with this? Because their next pay per view is in is actually a couple of weeks in Columbus, Ohio, but it's like that's not going to compete with this, and they're not yeah. going to have anything big until Survivor Series. Which I mean, the only thing they're writing on that is Rock's twenty fifth, which he needs to be there for them to make the real. Because I mean, if Rock's there, then that's going to take over every headway on every news station, but. It's it's wild, man. They really got to look at this pay per view and be like, "You had half this roster on your roster." Like, I if I'm a board of director person, I'm looking at Vince and Bruce Pritchard and Dunboy, and like, how did you let this happen? 
Like, if you, you're, why you're were you a playing? You need to talk to him. Well, I, I honestly do for like podcast purposes, trying to ask questions, but they have the, like the screening thing and my shit gets shot down. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't even lie to you about, about that. So, I, I mean, uh, bigger people than me are getting mad. Fox and USA are getting hot with WWE's releasing and all that stuff. So, I don't know, man. I feel like it's this is bad. I mean, because even if you only watch wrestling for the men, why would you watch WWE? There's no really top. Not right now. I mean, it's the Roman thing. Like, yeah, you see the lower stuff and like you have fun stuff, but it's not. It's the Roman thing. AEW has all these people. I don't know who the hell is about to be the next number one contender to Kenny. Like, shit. You could have just <laughs> you would think it'd be a dream like oh let's have a fatal four-way with daniel Br- brian danielson adam cole cm punk and kenny omega oh yeah that's some fantasy booking no aw can really do fantasy booking in real life if they wanted to that is the wildest shit instead of doing roman reigns beat dolph ziggler for the umpteenth time like what do we do <laughs> and this is wild. Yeah, well fuck it i said this uh on our uh on our uh, messenger the other uh, the other day, um, I want to throw out my bold prediction now for future AEW stuff, and I'm basing that on earlier this week's shit, not after tonight shit. Because who the fuck knows? But I'm still throwing it out there. Um, I still think you have Hangman Adam Page takes it from Kenny That's Omega. Right. He said that, and then I think it's going to be MJS who's going to take it from. Adam Page. And I think you're gonna have Punk take it from uh MJF. I have no idea what's gonna happen after that. I don't yeah. know. Well because when Hangman Adam Page comes back, like business will be a boom and they are gonna be in Virginia here in a few weeks. So he'll be back for that. I mean, they keep advertising him. So let's go. Let's fucking go. The God bless the wrestling world. This is nuts. It's awesome, though. And again, they did it again when Punk came back. Made that Wednesday must see to see what he had to say. Now this Wednesday, Adam Gold, Brian Danielson, Ruby, must see. And and Suzuki. And Suzuki. Suzuki, Suzuki yeah. versus Moxley and Cincy. Fuck, let's go. Must God see. damn. Must see. Shoot. I mean, I wish wish I had some days off. I would have went. To, I would have loved to see that live. We kind of talked about it because my last day of work is Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm like, well, by the time I get off, I don't know. We could, we might miss a couple matches, but we could get down there. I'm like, can, I don't want to go to Cincy. Hey, you can get down there and then potentially shout out to the DB expert. You could see, you could go spend the night in Mitch's. You wouldn't have to get a, we wouldn't have to get a hotel or anything. Yeah, but then he's going to make me like babysit his kid and shit. And I'm just <laughs> like that. Jacob, anything else, man? Because I'm I'm really interesting to see what WWE's retort to this is going to be. Yeah, I I got nothing. I mean, thanks for coming. Thank, I'm never like, hey, let's do an emergency fucking podcast unless something like this. This is the mo- this is insanity. Uh, so thanks for hey, we need an emergency podcast. You're like, fuck it, let's do it now. Like, sweet, let's do it now. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Like. Oh. Me, you're the you're the real Mister Consistent. I'm just the every other week guy. Hey, you're the man. fucking like doing like 37 podcasts a week type shit. It was a big deal. I mean, it was. I mean, once Adam Cole was like shit, and I was already in my brain. I was like, damn, we're gonna have to do this either Monday, Monday and the latest. And then when Daniel Bryan came, he said emergency. I was like, yeah, we just need to do it now. We need to do it just well, right now. <laughs> There's something else I forgot to say. I had it because I was like, because he finished the match early and they had like some time. I looked, I'm like, well, this ends at midnight. I'm like, they got like 20 minutes to kill here. I'm like, something's got to happen. I literally had piped up in the group chat, Daniel or Brian Danielson, like a shitload of explanation. <laughs> and then when Adam Cole came, I'm like, oh shit. And I delete that, insert Adam, Adam Cole, Cole. Which, which honestly, felt even like it was such a big surprise it's wild god i loved it dude it's wild all i gotta say with this is yes i agree it is the pay-per-view 
of the year, hands down, from a match perspective, from a star power perspective, from a surprise perspective. I don't see anything topping this this year at all. Even oh, from a location thing perspective, too, because it was in Chicago. I will have to watch that match of the year candidate because I was unable to watch it. So I am going to try and find that and watch that match. But yeah, man, this was wild. I didn't expect Adam Cole to be here. I really didn't. And he's here. Brian Daniels is here. We said that last month he'd be here. Shout out to Ruby, Suzuki. Like, this is wild, man. AEW, just my tip my hat to y'all. WWE and I guess it's just WWE because everyone else is all forbidden doors open. I got to respond with something, man. And and no, a not proper response is not Goldberg for the 20th time. That is not a proper response. I honestly, jokingly, I wonder if someone woke up Vince when he's sleeping in his silk pajamas, told him what happened, and he's on like his secret underground basement room with a video conferencing directly linked to Dwayne's house. It's like, hey, can I get you on TV sooner, please? Or what? Or when do you think the next? You know how WWE answers back. When's the next Legends Night on Raw? <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when they call Hogan and all the, get me Sergeant Slaughter, damn it! <laughs> that's gonna get the ratings. And I mean, Raw's got it. They got to put some shit out because I mean, they will. Summer's over, and now AEW's doing this, and now they got Monday Night Football coming up soon. So. Do you think WWE just takes the L and just kind of sits back until SummerSlam? Roll it Rumble. just kind of rests on their morals right now. Oh, you mean like till next? You mean, oh, from this past SummerSlam and be like, oh, we're done for the year? Like, do they just basically just kind of like coast it out until SummerSlam? Uh, yeah, well, I think I think Survivor Series they will have things planned. I know this Friday they're in Madison Square Garden and Lesnar is supposed to be there, so whatever. But, I mean, I don't know how that's going to go, but I think they're definitely going to coast till November. And then they'll coast until January, then obviously WrestleMania and all that stuff. But they got to figure something out. They, they got to do something. Like, I don't know. They got to call their full-time people, whoever's on vacation, and write some, write some better stuff. They got people. I mean but they got to figure that out, bro. They really do. Yeah, it's not the people, it's the writers. Yeah, it's the writers. They might do a knee-jerk reaction and do Demon Balor versus Roman on a SmackDown randomly and Roman win and then think that was a great thing. Like, oh, we got some shock because Demon Balor lost. That would be, that's WWE logic and it would fail for them. But no, man, I appreciate you doing the emergency pod. I mean, it it had to be done. AEW, good stuff on you guys. Definitely going to be following these next couple weeks how people respond and how AEW builds from this. Look out for some more signings from AEW. I think there's going to be some more in the coming weeks with 90 days being done with WWE. And WWE, guys, you lost people because of a Twitch. Put that in perspective. You lost millions of dollars in Adam Cole because of a Twitch account. That's bad business. Bad, bad business. And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.